Hello, I'm Doug, stand-up physicist, sitting down to give a dry board talk about tensors versus space-time numbers, my hopeful upgrade to the very successful tensor calculus. So I'm going to talk about vector components. So if you have a vector A, you say, well, it's got a magnitude, and we'll call it A0 and it has a basis vector e hat zero and then if it's a two-dimensional vector space we'll write two of these down and we could write a third one down and i bet you're seeing a pattern here we can write down as many of these components as is appropriate for the vector space that we decide to work with. And there really isn't a limitation on this, I don't believe. In fact, some people have infinite dimensional vector spaces. Hmm. Now it's, those are kind of hard to deal with. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about these two things. So uh, this AI thing is... Uh, is the magnitude. But it's not just a size thing. That factor has to actually have some properties and uh, it should really be a mathematical field. And that's a very technical sort of thing. Uh, that's actually not that complicated in some ways because it means that it acts as a group um, uh, with the plus, oper uh, plus operator, so I guess I might be able to go something like this, um, actually like this, and it acts, has to be a group with multiplication modulo zero um, with multiplication, all right? And the reason that's important is because that's the road to calculus, and you need calculus in order to do calculus uh, with vectors which is usually the case. All right, and the other thing that you need are uh, basis vectors, okay? Um, great, so what people usually do is, or often do is, is write, the, write this in the tuple form, and they go one, zero, 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 and say, you know, that's, that's basically just E zero. Now this actually bothers me a little bit because um, if they really are, are the same, then you know why why are you using these two different things? And well, I think I know why they do that for actually for a bunch of reasons. But uh, one of the chief ones is they allows them to think of the logic of the basis vectors separately from all the logic of the magnitudes. And what they'll usually do is talk about the dot product of two basis vectors. And so let's do that. Let's go E um, M dotted to E N. And that equals this Kronecker delta function, which uh, splits into two values. If M equals N, then you get one, you get unity. Well, unity is a good thing. And if they are not equal, then you get zero. All right, great. So how does space-time numbers compare with this kind of situation? Okay, as I say, I don't like the component where we've got the magnitude and the basis vector. I want the logic together. Uh, it feels tighter that way. So let me write this as a tuple. And I'll write a Greek letter phi, and then a1, a2, and a3. And with space-time numbers, I don't get to say, or however many you want to add, <laughs> okay? I'm stuck with space-time, which to me is a great place to be stuck because I can do EM, the standard model, gravity, special relativity, like everything I care about as a mathematical physics kind of person. So yeah, that's my limitation. I can only do all of mathematical physics. Uh, that is constrained to space-time, which seems to be everything so far. 
All right. So already there's a difference. This first term, I'm going to actually call a scalar. And the reason I do that is because it has different properties than these other three, which I'm going to call a vector. Okay. And let me define a capital delta guy that I'm going to hope is kind of like these basis vectors in a way. Um, or it has similar, why don't we say it has similarities? It's not the same thing. Um, and this is going to basically be uh, where for i will equal 1 and not i, it equals 0. Okay? So for i, 0 would be 1, 0, 0, 0, so, and so on. Okay, so now let's think about the product of two of these things. And great. This splits into four cases. Uh, the first two come from where m equals n, okay? And then we say, hey, do we have a scalar and a scalar? Well, if you do, then you're going to get 1. And say, great, that's just like that case. Rock the house. But what happens if you do a vector times a vector? Who? Well, you actually end up with a minus 1. So this isn't the same anymore. Uh, why did that minus sign come in there? <laughs> well, they, we'd need to, to introduce you to number theory, uh, to the complex plane. You know where i times i equals minus 1? That's not like similar to this. That's exactly this. Okay, so we're using number theory to define this, uh, th this particular result. All right, now if we have the case where m is not equal to n, then you could have a scalar times a vector. And when you do, let's say, say vector m, then you end up with, uh, with 1 in that uh, 1m, as it were. Okay, so that says what we expect, right? We expect the scalar times a vector to give you the vector back. Except this is, to me, a really important quality. When we talk about vectors in the traditional tensor sense, all, all those components are the same. There's just no zero versus three versus what they, you, you treat it like equals. Okay. When I am when I am developing space-time numbers, the the space-time part, the vector part, is not like the time part, which is the scalar part, but. We all know that a scalar times a vector gives you back the vector, okay? It's either longer or shorter, okay? So uh, that's that's what's going on there. And instead of saying, well, the uh, scalars are just kind of like outside of vector space, it's, it's like, like no, it's, it's I like it. It's built in. I know where it lives, okay? It lives in the first house, <laughs> okay? Um, but what happens if you take a vector m and a vector n? Okay, and these guys are not the same. Well, what you end up with is minus 1 to the permutation of that uh, t to the vector, uh, oh, I should say maybe, maybe now, uh, O. Okay, so not M, not N, the third guy. Okay, so if, if I had like 1 in the A1 spot and 1 times a2, well, there's no permutation going on there, so you just get A3, okay? Whereas if it was A2, A1, that's one permutation, so you get the minus one. Now, that's huge, okay? Because when they introduce you to tensors, they will eventually get around to saying, well, in certain dimensional spaces, we can have this exterior product and uh, we can deal with cross products. Well, <laughs> I want to have cross products there at the very start. The reason is there are all kinds of things in physics in the universe that spin. So you better like build in uh, the ability to handle and to manage spinning stuff. And that's what that is. 
that's the ability to handle uh, spinny, spinny stuff right at the start. And so I consider that, no, and believe me, they're, they're going to do that in tensors. They're going to get around to doing that. It's just that in this foundational kind of situation where I'm just saying I'm multiplying my different ones together and figuring out what's going on, I can say I can handle spinny stuff, and I think that's a good thing. Thank you very much.